bottom lane straight away to answer? Do they go for a priority jungle pick? I mean, we even see blind solo lanes. I mean, we saw the Jax as one of the earlier picks in the previous game for BLG. But it will be the bottom lane. As Heimerdinger open as well, could be an option alongside that virus. Ooh, the Lee Sin is going to get hovered, but it's most likely going to be that Wukong locked in for a second, ga second game in a row. But I'm enjoying this Varus pick. I think it does offer a lot as you can flex between the on hit and poke build. I'm assuming, well, it really depends on uh, uh, BLG's top side on which rune he decides to go. But with the vibe being locked in, a lot of lockdown and CC for the side of LGD this time around, where it's a lot easier to execute. It's one button. However, you do need to play with your uh, rest of the team as you don't want to be overextending as mediocre. No, you certainly don't. You certainly don't. Uh, this is only a second game of Vi of the split for Meteor. And also, he hovered that Lee Sin, yet to play that this split as well. He's very much been all about the Sejuani and the Maokai. And even a game of Skana and Zac in there for Meteor as Why well. He's been a weird jungler this split. play the Lee Sin if you already played Skana? Come on. I know, I know. But goes with the Vi at the end, and it's going to be answered with a Wukong for sure. Lucian Nami comes back into patch 13.4 to haunt me. This is probably the first Lucian Nami I've seen since the patch change. Definitely hit the Lucian in particular, as uh, Nami is the fish wife of Lucian nowadays. Nautilus is going to get locked in here as well. A lot of hard CC from LGD. Very straightforward, and they are looking for that early game agency, which is what they're trying to aim for from the interviews that we saw earlier. Yeah, interesting to see this Nautilus coming on through instead of the Heimerdinger. We've seen a ton of Heimerdinger from Jin Zhao specifically, but obviously wanting to find those engagers, you've got the Vi there as well. So a lot of productivity locked in already for LGD. Need to see them using that effectively. Over to BLG for the bans though. Has Annie taken off the board away from Yagao this time around? I'm curious if BLG will go for mid lane bans as well or could focus on the top side. And looks like that's what they'll do. The Scion take it away from Shaoshu. LGD needs to ban Talia here. Well, you do have the Vi and you're definitely looking for something that has the same amount of mobility in that mid-jungle duo. You need to remember that you're up against someone like Yagal, where his Talia is definitely a signature champion in his hands. So if you leave that open, I'm afraid Yagal is going to have a very fun time. It does get taken off here, so that's really good uh, banning out of LGD. However, once again, we saw how useful Yaga was once he got a mid lane matchup that he was comfortable with. So Hedgehog really needs to step up for this game too. Yeah, we need to see something special here from Hedgehog because Yaga, you know, MVP performance there to set up every single play, neutralizing that mid lane, and also just the the flash kill at level three, right where we saw Shun influencing that matchup. The Jacks locked in. Gragas huh. is open. Do we see Bin just run the matchup back? Surely he picks the Gragas here and teaches him a lesson. I mean, Kennen is also a very good answer. I mean, there's just so many counter picks to this Jax. Don't go for the Nar. Go for go for something more spicy, Bin. Come on. I would love to see the Kennen. Kennen would be so much fun to oh, watch, damn. but it will be the Nar. Locked in, but I mean, been exceptionally good on the NAR. Great team fight tool for his squad, especially when you got a Wukong alongside that Lucian Nami. Good to set up for that team fight. And uh, Yagao baiting us with the Vagar last draft. We'll see what he's going to lock in first before we talk about it, because Yagao, uh, plenty of options available to him, and he's a player that is more than willing to bring all kinds of stuff to the mid lane. He's bringing okay. Gragas out in the mid lane. We have Gragas for the mid lane for this game two in the series where it's not going to that top lane matchup. It's going in the mid lane as a blind and Gragas mid lane definitely getting more popularity as we enter this new patch where he does build that row. Obviously going to get responded with an Ari where it pairs extremely well with the Vi. So a lot of agency this time around for LGD. It, are they going to pull the trigger though? Because the problem with them is the hesitancy, but this time they have so much setup. Yeah, I mean, wait a second. Is this Wukong? Mi no, okay, they did swap in the end. I was, <laughs> I could have <laughs> believed it. I could have believed it. Yeah, BLG, a lot of tools and a lot of excitement on their squad. Ari, though, a good answer, right? Because the explosive cast, High Chow can just dish, uh, dash away from that one. He can follow up on the Vi, win from BLG in game number one. 
LGD though bringing more to the table it feels like this time where you've got the, the uh, Hail of Blades there for Varus alongside Jinja. Hail of Blades into the Lucian army I mean that will work because the Lucian is relatively short range so you're just trying to look for those short pokes. You do need to consider that Nami has that little bit of sustain, so you can't do it too many times as you only have a Nautilus yourself, so you're looking for those hard engages. Relatively normal style for both of these sides. A ward does get dropped in that top side where Bin wants that lane party up against his Shaxx early on. Yeah, we'll see if he's going to be able to get it. Shout shoot steps onto the ward, but Bin going to be helping out Shun in the early game, making sure that he can... Uh, get things rolling and uh, get a good clear going for himself. I'm looking towards how these two junglers play out the early game. Playing on opposite sides for the time being. Meteor moving up towards that top lane. Shun starting on his blue. Moving down towards the bottom lane. I feel like there is plenty of space for these two junglers to get involved early and try and make things happen. Most definitely. I mean, looking at BLG's composition once again, the Nar is just going to try and do relatively even up against Jax. A lot of trading already as Bin gets zoned off his own wave, but Wukong most likely just going to part towards that Lucian and get him online early. More trading! I mean, Xiaoxu definitely not trying to play passive this time around. No, definitely not. Wants to get aggressive, <laughs> wants to influence this lane, and I can't blame him, but Bin trading it back? Shun. Not pathing down to the bottom side. Instead, two camps straight up towards that top lane. Bin might be able to bait him in. The jump in from Xiaoshu as he hits level two. Bin flashes under the tower. Xiaoshu goes under One the more. tower and gets the solo kill. Shun punishes, but still Xiaoshu gets his 400. So much aggression in this early game and exactly what we want from Xiaoshu as he picks up that first blood into his pockets, also trading the flash for flash. So really worth the wave, however, is in a bit of a weird state, so if Wukong decides to come and regain, we did see some action in the bottom lane where On had to burn both summoners, but that does mean this Jax is going to be a slightly more ahead compared to the Nar, and we saw how important Jax was when it does come to the later stage of the game and the amount of pressure he provides. Yeah, we'll see. If, uh, I mean, if he can scale up and, oh, sorry, if he can get some early, get early kills in this game, it means that you can kind of skip a lot of the the scaling that's required and make things happen we'll with Shun. Not starting slowly here, moving into the bottom line. Now is LPC the target and he'll go down. Jinxiao trying to trade, but there's no way he finishes this kill. Flash over the wall. No follow-up from BLG, but two ganks, two successes for Shun. However, oh, they are going to meet in this bottom side jungle as Meteor has that red buff available, so he can look for a kill, misses the Q. Unfortunately, Shun this just... is going to... So aware, so aware of what's going on, right? There was no vision there, but just had yeah. a feeling that something was up. We do see mid lane Greg is having a 0% win rate in the LPL, so hopefully <laughs> we see more success with Yagal on this champion this time around. But a lot of great things for the side of BLG so far. We did say that Wukong is going to play mainly towards his bot side, where they do want kills on the Lucian. However, the Nami did get in a sneaky order and got the kill onto LPC, so not the best results, but definitely something going. Yeah, Shashu again, looking for big damage onto Bin here. Low on HP, but Bin gets to trade it back somewhat. Didn't have a lot available. Shashu's cooldowns are going to be back. And Bin losing basically all of his health in that trade. Having that extra long sword just means Bin is going to have a tough time in this top lane. I mean, the wave state is terrible as well, yeah. where he needs the jungle to bail him out. You don't have Mega either, so your health is extremely fragile as Xiaoxu. Not having Flash either, but he's just going to jump on your face and give you two orders. Yeah, depressingly for Xiaoxu, off, the, off of that first play, he is actually pretty far behind in CS, but luckily for him, this freeze should pretty easily uh, change that fact. Yagao. Moving up though, drops a ward in Pixel Brush. I believe that was spotted by the Scryer's Bloom, so we'll just be instantly cleared. And with the Meteor on the top side, Bin has to be extremely careful. Most definitely, and we see Meteor already taking that spot. Oh, the hook land! Good hook from Jin Zhao there, but not really much follow up from LPC. Couldn't get any damage down, so just a trade. Hai Chao moving up to the top side. Shun is here. Drops a control ward, sees Hai Chao. 
he knows something's up now. Bin will be aware that there's five. no flash. He's in mini nah right now. Shun's got to save the day jump straight onto High Chow. Bin stunned up. Xiao Xu moves in and the kill already there. Shun, can he answer? Yes, one kill already. Now onto Mesia he goes, who has to flash away. Yagao arrives on the scene. And Shun is just putting out fires everywhere on the map. LGD looking for more. What a hook from Jin Zhao here, but LPC caught up in a bubble and Jin Zhao low on HP, arrow wide from LPC. BLG survived aggression. Good dodge from Elk there. I think he did need to burn the flash if the Varus Q landed, but top lane traded one for one as Hai Chao falls down, even burning the flash on Ari and another kill into this Wukong's hands. So in the end, it's still relatively even, but I mean, that dive was played a little bit messy. I don't know what happened where Hai Chao ended up being the one tanking tower where it all started with Xiao Xu tanking the tower. So we need to take another look at what happened here because they were just focusing down Bin and the tower was focusing Meteor. Oh, and he walked out of the tower range and Hai Chao taking an extra tower shot fell as a response. And in the end, still pretty even. So Meteor steps out of tower aggro and then the, the second half of Hai Chao's Q hits Shun still under the tower. So, so that one shot flies over towards him and sets up Shun for the kill. Really unlucky, honestly, from Hai Chao. But either way, it's Shun 2-0 and 1 right now. And what a fantastic start to the game for him on the Wukong. Is Mr. Elk cooking something with his build here? He does have the serrated duck in his pockets. Is it going to be a collector? So, I've seen this a couple of times on Lucian, where you go for the straight thing, and then you just go into your normal mythic. So, it's very likely yeah. those two long swords are for a noon quiver, and then he goes into, you know, his Gale Force or his Cracker Slayer, I assume Gale Force. Um, it's, it's a bit weird. It does delay your mythic, but it just means you have so much burst early on. It's very interesting. I mean, I haven't seen this so far, but I'm definitely learning. The Shun is back in this bottom lane. Flashes are available for LGD. There is a pink cord there to spot out Shun as well, but it goes over the wall. I mean, not too much setup just quite yet. Yeah, kind of spotted on a wall as he starts to move down towards this bottom side. Feels like BLG are readying up for something. Drake on the map right here would be the first one of the game. Nobody touching that one just yet as Meteor is going to go for the Scuttle Crab. Shun leaning towards that mid lane, but Hai Chao has the Spirit Rush available. There shouldn't really be much threat towards Asari. It does seem like BLG is going to just look to do this Herald first as they don't have bottom lane priority. So Shun going to be contested as we do see Meteor responding to this. Yeah, but Bin having the wave in a pretty good spot where at any moment he can just force this wave in and and crash it at any moment he can clear this wave and uh, move on over. Xiaoshu struggling to contest, but once spins back into mini Nar, that's his moment. Meteor, I don't know if he was trying to get into the pit with that last cone, but if he was, he fumbled it. If not, he's moving up to this top side to try and make a play onto Bin. Don't know if he'll get away with it though, because he walked over a ward. Shun is going to respond to this top lane play as Yagal has moved first. We haven't seen too much from the Aryan Vi as they both have ultimates available. Yeah. And I feel like we're consistently seeing LGT wanting to... Oh my days, the damage onto the pitch. Shaoshu doing two thirds of his health in a split second. But crucially, been surviving and about to turn Mega Nar, so a bit of sustain there for him. And we'll be fine. He'll survive the play. Yag out. Basically threatening 2v1 at this point, and LGT not willing to fight him. That could have been a pick if Meteor and Hijau just commit onto Yagao there. They maybe could have just one shot. Yeah, at least burning a flash from Yaga as he was caught out extremely uh, out of position in that river as he was a bit late to the play, but it's okay, it's okay. The TP does get burned from Hijau. We haven't seen too many plays out of the Aryan by only one top lane dive. I mean, you have the setup from your bottom lane at this nine minute mark where both ultimates available. A lot of hard to see, although you, you, you can just go for the Nami without the cleanse. I think something needs to happen before these 5v5 skirmishes as Yago is going to go towards that Rod of the Ages and he's going to get more tanky from now on. Yeah, I mean, he's only going to get scary. I have had a little look at Yaga 
has solo queue history, and he has played a bit of this Gragas, um, but not too tremendous success and not too often. Whether or not that's the same in scrims is a whole different question, but I mean, the Gragas now essentially being a triple flex, right? You can take it top, mid, jungle. You can even technically take it support. Having Yasuo AD carry, why not? Mix it up. I never want to see Yasuo AD carry in my LPL games, but Shun, the eyes are set on him here. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's gone. Where did he go? He's a magic I blinked trick. and he died. Yeah, they managed to make the enemy jungle disappear. Uh, Shun vanishing off your screens. What sort of war does he try to do his red buff? And LGT, this is the proactivity that we've been waiting for. The whole gang gets involved and they are rewarded with a dragon. This is a much better game number two from LGT. They've got themselves a bit of a gold lead. They get themselves the first Drake. This is more like it. Yago is going to get spotted on a ward here, so Xiaoxu should just run away. But yeah, a lot of easy execution from LGD's composition in this game too. Xiaoxu! Oh, he actually flashes under! He gets a solo kill! I don't know, is this good? I, <laughs> that's twice now that he has killed himself to kill Bin. Xiaoxu really doesn't want Bin to be farming in this lane as the Nar, but that does mean another kill into the hands of Wukong, and he did waste a bit of Yagal's time. The ultimate... Oh, no. Elk in trouble has to flash the wall here on the next target as Meteor moves on over. Off play quite aggressively here, but I don't think Meteor will be able to get it. No vital just quite yet, but Hachal is moving down first as no one is responding from the side of BLG. So this just looks like the bottom lane is going to get forced out as they get some plates down. Yeah, good response from BLG to move away from the tower, not fall into the dive. Will mean LPC gets a couple of plates solo to himself, maybe even three actually off the back of this one. And a lot of CS denied from Elk here. And a solid play coming out from LGD on the bottom side. Answered now by Shun in the top side, hitting away on this tower, using the Herald to guarantee some plates of their own. I'm pretty surprised this plate, or oh, this Herald does get dropped for the Gragas. That does mean all of his items are going to come online extremely fast. But your Lucian being slightly behind, even with the Serrated Dirk, I mean, that just means his Mythic is going to come online very, very late. Having that stopwatch available, however, so he does have a way of preventing those dives. But Shelton just absolutely egoing it and goes in for the kill and uh, does get it for a one for one trade. And Bin does not get his CS under tower. Yeah, I guess. Shaoshu just deciding, like, look, Yagao's behind me. He saw him on a ward, right? Uh, he definitely that... saw him on a ward. But <laughs> I feel like he saw him he before cared. he went in and then still made the decision <laughs> to go for the kill anyway uh, and try and find his extra bit of gold. Perhaps feeling like he needs to carry based on uh, what's been happening across the course of this series. Feeling like he needs to be one of the big members here because... LPC getting those plates, but the first tower ending up going to bin in the end off the back of the Herald. Yago slightly wide on that one. But the belly bomb should still be able to find Jin Zhao. Bubble goes wide as well. On with a title to deny plays here. And Shun flashes out to safety. Elk now arriving on the play, but everybody walking away from this one. And somehow, nobody dies. Nobody died. BLG committed a lot of ultimates onto Jin Zhao. They thought they caught someone there, but just wasn't enough follow-up from the side of BLG. I mean, even Hai Chao tried to make something happen on this Ari. I believe there just wasn't enough damage from both sides. LPC wasn't there, to be fair, and that's a huge chunk of LGD's damage gone. But the fight dies down. A lot of CC being burnt and a lot of summoners gone from both sides as well. Yeah. Kind of a wild series of plays going on in this game. It's four to four, exactly even on gold. One Drake for LGD right now. Next one coming up in just over a minute and a half. This is a strange one, but this is why people have been critical of the LG, right? Where in some games they look fantastic, in some games they look amazing, like game number one of this series. Other games, they struggle to maintain leads like this. Is, they're against a team that's 3-7 in the standards. You should expect BLG to be a squad that can quite comfortably take this. They're not looking like it in game number two. LGD really showing up. This is why teams... and uh, This is why people are critical of BLG as a team. Most definitely. I didn't see too much proactiveness from BLG either. They were really good at diffusing plays, however, this time around, Bin 
Carlene 0 and 3 on this Nod does mean that the Jax is incredibly strong at this stage in the game. They are going to look for something in this top side, however. A lot of lockdown. Yeah, Gao in trouble. Here we go. Everybody jumping straight on in. The CC chain is absurd. But Yagao's kind of tanky. The belly pops keeps up alive. Meteor once more. But they won't find it. The sustain is there. The TP comes out as well from Bin. With Shun in the wings. LGD another attempt, but it doesn't quite land. Yago just coming back from a rough late night as uh, he just chugs some beer and he's out but the other thrust from Ari does mean you are trading off that extra bit of damage for some CC as BLG has relatively low range champions for this game too so unfortunate that you weren't able to get the kill into Yaga as you committed some ultimates towards it but should be fine as the map is slowly building up and opening up for LGD yeah LGD finding ways this lethality virus an item and a half, certainly a, a good milestone for them. The LG group it up, they want to contest this next straight. It's up on the map now, LGD got first of the game. That ward not quite able to be cleared by Vin there. As uh, the mid wave just going to be shoved in by Elk, the Herald down there to force priority as well. This gives BLG entry into the river, and they're just going to start the Drake off straight away, but the TP comes out from Shashu. Surely a contest here for LGD. They're posturing like they want to fight. Could have a 5v5 on our hands as BLG committing to the Drake. In the meantime, they zone everyone with the tidal wave. Drake taken. Bin of us to Megan, but just CC up and take it down. Meteor to answer though. One oh, so the HP flashes away. Shaoshu chasing him down. The flash from on to survive as Shun left alone on the top side of the play. Jumps onto LPC, but he drops. And LGD find themselves a for one exactly what you wanted much four kills going to the hands of lgd as xiaoshu just comes in late to the fight and cleans everyone up i mean the start the fight started quite messily as a lot of skill shots were going wide but it doesn't matter as five to two now xiaoshu on the shacks looking very very comfortable in this game state we're gonna take another look a lot of cc landed onto jinjiao but wasn't able to finish him up just quite yet i mean the hook misses the charm misses but it doesn't matter xiaoshu had that angle onto the back line of blg so he was able to just do so much damage extremely tanky as well i've been saying how lucian behind you just have no damage to deal with the front line of lgd and that problem is really showing this team fight yeah, I mean, fantastic stuff from LGD, though, to be this decisive, right? To, after BLG committed so much to just zoning, right? They used the tidal wave, they used the explosive cast, they were trying to just keep LGD away. LGD then recommit to the fight, find themselves some picks, and yes, BLG got the Drake, but weren't able to get more off of it. And Bin just completely denied, right? Trying to turn Mega, trying to get his ultimate off, but the CC chain was absurd. Most definitely, and my question is, who is going to deal with this Jax in the side lane? Because Nar already extremely behind in terms of items and just not having that presence from early on. And Yagal going the full tank build, definitely not going to be killing anything in his circumstance as well. So, BLG definitely in a bit of a sticky situation now as LGD getting those items online. Yeah, good stuff for LGD. I just feel like that Jax, that Jax, <laughs> that Jax <laughs> is going to be an absolute yeah. menace for BLG. Xiaoshu, 5-2-2 two, and two in this game. I mean, the Jax from Bin was an absolute menace later on in the game. In game number one of the series, it feels like this whole series might just revolve around Jax, honestly, with how Xiaoshu's doing in game two. Look, if you can't counter it, just ban it. But unfortunately, this time around, it got left through again. Elf burning the ultimate to clear this mid wave. Only thing that's going for them is that this mid tower is still up and available, so the Vin control is still relatively even. Yeah, fantastic stuff so far. The Shaoshu moving into the bottom lane. Vin could be in trouble here, but I think he should be able to just escape out of the top side of the play, walk away with his life. Let's talk oppositions though, because it feels like as we get later in the game, LGD, they're in a really good spot for this one. 
Yeah, most definitely, especially with your Jax being online already in these team fights. All you need to do is defuse the amount of engage that BLG has. And Yago on this Greg is, is a little bit questionable. We saw his ultimates in these team fights, and most of them aren't too impactful. All you need to do is land that one ulti that wins you the game. We haven't seen it just quite yet, so it really depends on how Yaga uh, functions on this Gragas. But like you've been saying, LGD very comfortable with this current game state, where Xinjiao having a much better game as well. Yeah, it's it's been a strange one from BLG, honestly. Feels like they have so much practice. I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna target the Gragas in a bit later here from Yagao. Like, it doesn't feel like it's been able to have much impact so far in this one. Is uh, an attempt on Tahani Chow. Not going to do much. And granted, he's gone for the Rod of Ages. Like, it's going to be once you've got a couple of items that really you're going to come online. But perhaps we needed a little bit more earlier on because I'm not sure how well this composition is going to scale into the late game from BLG. Most definitely. And especially if Yagal gets his ultimate onto someone like the Vi or the Ari or the Jax. I mean, you just run away. You have so much mobility. So. Realistically, Yaro on the Dragos is only going to be able to lock down the bottom lane of LGD. However, LBC playing a lot more disciplined as well on this Varus, where he only has one death. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, after game number one, I think uh, we needed a better performance from LBC, and he is showing it for us here. So, fantastic stuff there on the Varus, getting good damage out as well. Getting close to three items, which I feel like is... An exceptionally strong point for Lethality Varus once you finish that Mura Mana and finish your second Lethality item. Help pressuring Haichao, getting the Spirit Rush out, but it costs him his culling. Drake coming up in just a second, and LGD poised and ready in River. Finn can redeem himself with a huge Mega Nar play here. With the Flash available, he has position for it as well. Oh, Elk just gonna dive in the mid lane, but he's tanking tower. The Everfrost huge, as now the rest of the team jumps on in LGD, trying to find some picks here, and it's LPC to finish off on. Yagao in the middle of everyone, his bin moves over as that Meganar cheering for his team, launching everyone in, but they don't have the damage, they don't have the health bars. Bin throws the enemy and just gives them four. Munch, nothing is dying on the side of LGD. There's just nothing dying. I mean, you don't have the damage anymore. Lucian was completely zoned out by the Jax. Nothing is going to kill him as they also pick up the Baron here. I mean, this is just looking an overall win for LGD as they manage to completely take over the early game. Yeah, huge stuff from LGD. They have more consistent damage, playing well in these fights. And I mean, the ult from Vin, I get the idea, but uh, it didn't work out. The Everfrost, huge here from Haichao. Means Elk's basically out of the fight. Yeah, Elk already extremely low to start off the fight, and that is your main damage in these team fights. On lockdown by the Nautilus CC and gets sniped away, but nothing is killing this Jack. Vin even ulties him closer into Elk's face, and Elk is a little bit speechless here <laughs> as he gets flashed CC. A lot of miscommunication definitely from BLG, and even in these team fights, Nar doesn't seem like he is doing too much as Mega. No, been having a tough series, honestly. Um, struggling at the start of that previous game as well, during the laning phase. Managed to redeem himself later on, but this game, he had the counter pick. It's just not been working out. So much presence sent towards that top side from LGD. Not just Xiaoshu, but having help from Meteor, having help from Haichou. Xiaoshu, just straight up egoing, making sure that he's getting those yeah. solo kills, sacrificing himself to do it. Now with Baron in the hands of Xiaoshu as well, he is just going to pressure 4-1 as Bin is never going to be able to match up against this Jax if he ever does decide to play aggressive. BLG, I mean, Elf is already half HP from the Poke Barris. Yeah, luckily there is a bit of sustain there. On will be able to oh heal that up, but... I mean, there's less sustain on BLG's side than there is damage on uh, <laughs> LGD's side. That sustain won't last forever, and especially with Baron, you're just going to be picked apart slowly but surely. Look, you can be tanky, but... If you're only tanky with no damage, then you're going to slowly die as a result anyways. But this tier 2 tower does look like it's going to get taken away by LGD as soon. It's hovering on the side, but look at Bin and the Ari on side lanes. They are just suffocating BLG. Yeah. Shaoshu and Hai Chao. As Bin might just get solo killed again. Walks away with his life, but barely. Shaoshu. How 
having a phenomenal series, it has to be said. Look good in game number one. Looking amazing in game number two as well. As tier two's taken out across the map. High Chow pressuring an inhib tower. In fact, the inhib tower's already gone. Pressuring the inhib itself. As the rest of LGD move up to the top side. Finish off the last tier two. I mean, this is a beautiful Barrett buff from LGD. The amount of towers they've got is absurd. Yeah, Baron stocks are going up as a lot of towers are falling for BLG. Oh, the ultimate no. doesn't connect, unfortunately. But the problem with High Child split pushing on this Ari is that BLG doesn't have enough lockdown to kill the Ari as she does have the ultimate to fly away. Gragas ultimate does get flashed away from LPC, so that was their only engage angle, and LGD diffused it perfectly. Tough one for BLG, but a great game from LGD. And, uh, uh, a showing of what we need to see from this team. A bit more proactivity, like clearly setting up some of these plays. Like I feel like Hai Chao and Meteor alongside Jin Chao consistently making plays together, right? We saw them invading onto Shun at the red buff. We saw them setting up plays around the mid lane. We saw them diving bin in the top side. Like this is more like what we wanted to see. Like this proactivity and just a bit of team play out from the squad. Yeah, an overall better early game as well, where that huge winning play for the Dragon definitely gave them all the gold leads that they needed. Bin half HP, he's dead. Oh, right. Well, Bin's gone. Hai Chow just completely one shots him. That's a 10 stack Dark Seal as well for Hai Chow. Didn't quite realize how much damage he would be doing, especially with an Everfrost, but I guess Hai Chow has entered Assassin State as. Uh, just destroys Bin. Bin, 0 and 6 in this game. It's not been a good one for him. Definitely not a pretty game as a solo in his OPLG. Meteor getting CC, but he's alive. He survived this one. Jin Chao, the next target is here. Comes Shao Shu onto the back line on the target. Can't get this damage down the onto the Jasper. The counter strike denying so much. Flash over the wall and down goes Shun. Here's Hai Chao to finish the job as Meteor gets another kill. And this will be LGD taking at least one inhibitor. Shao just has that leap on a five second cooldown. It doesn't matter if you flash away, you're just gonna die as a result anyway. It's the ultimate oh. from High Chow. Elk tried his best here, but High Chow just eradicates him. Almost gets set kill on the back of it as well. I've been telling you much the importance of Lucian in this team composition. He can't be behind this Jax, an absolute monster once again for the second time this night. On is gonna just get slapped. As Bin flushes his teammate. Oh! But hey! Bin hey. always gets one. <laughs> it's a silver lining for BLG as Bin finds a single kill. The next towers will fall. LGT aren't confident that they can end the game here. Bin chasing them away. Should alongside him. Maybe some constellation kills as LPC. Low on HP right here. Cyclone going to be used. That'll guarantee the kill onto LPC. As Bin gets 800 gold off the back of that one. Plus the shutdown onto Shaoshu. Drake is coming up in 20 seconds. Have BLG found a window? All right, Shaoshu settled down there, buddy. A big throw from him as he flips himself into the fountain and LGD wasn't able to finish off the game just there. They are a little bit scared because they were low on mana and HP, but the entire fight starts with BLG finding a pick onto Shun as he flashes away, but LPC having enough space between him and the carry just means he is just an insane Baz poke, but that's once again, how do you deal with this level 16 monster as the bottom lane of BLG? Something with a 5 second dash? I mean, it's just so insane that Xiaoxu can get to this age as Jax. Oh, a hook in the mid lane as well. I mean, there was a window for BLG. They found themselves a small window off the back of those picks, but with on going down, you got to believe that I'll get enough map control for the side of LGD to just grab this Baron for free. And after what we saw from the last Baron from LGD, you got to believe that I'll end the game. On got a little bit caught out as he was trying to put some wards down on this Baron, but what does it mean it costs for your life as Yogi can't even respond with the Dragon being taken away because their mid inhibitor is down and they can't overextend from the amount of mobility that LGD has with the Ari, Vi and Jax. So Gotta to huddle together, but I don't know if huddling is gonna work for you at this stage in the game. Yeah, honestly, I feel like we need Miracle for BLG if they're gonna come back in this one. 10,000 gold deficit. 
And a bit of bounce turn, Meganar, but CC up. He never gets to transform. Yagao buying space for the squad as Elk is still alive here, but Xiaoshu is behind the tower. Counter Strike comes out. Cyclone to deny it. Elk surviving as he walks away with his Gale Force. But he just can't get any damage done. There's so much threat onto this Lucian. He just can't do anything. LGD walking oh over. Elk stunned on the fan. Gets the stopwatch. Keeps himself alive, but take it out by his opposite member LPC to finish the game. And LGD pushes to three games and show us why they're still a team to be feared. A much cleaner game from Lao Gandia in this game too, as Xiao Xu definitely putting in the work as this Jax dominating since level one and translating that lead into an absolute team fighting monster where it allowed LGT to just walk forward and do whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, LGD in the late game, looking amazing. And it felt like there was... It, it was fairly quiet for a lot of the game. And then there was just one moment where LGD turned it on, got the four kills in that dragon fight. And the second that had happened, they never lost control again. They were just completely dominant from that point. And BLG looked kind of out of sorts. Game for himself. Never found a good opportunity on the Mega Nar. He got one big ultimate. There was no damage from the rest of the team to follow up on that ultimate and, you know, just a lot of question marks coming out for BLG. And it's kind of funny because at the end of that first game, I literally said, this is what we need from BLG. This is the, like, clean, concise gameplay that we've been wanting. And then this is what we get in game two. You never know which BLG you're going to get, heads or tails. And I guess for game two, we have been served with tails BLG as the solo laners of... Uh, BLG were definitely struggling to say the least, I believe, not having a single kill in their pockets where specifically for Bin, he had an extremely tough laning phase. And Elk being on the Lucian, someone that does need gold early on in the game, uh, Shun wasn't able to provide that as everything just crumbled down as Xiaoshu took over the game on this jazz. Yeah, Xiaoshu having a great series for himself. Both games looking like the better top laner, it has to be said. Double the damage, basically, of Bin in this one. Phenomenal stuff. LPC obviously top in the damage chart. On Elite Dali Barris, it's what you expect. Not too surprised in terms of that, but we do need to also address this Gragas mid. Now three games played in the LPL, specifically in mid lane, and still sitting on 0% win rate. I mean, we just didn't see the bombers coming out of Yagal, where he was able to displace LPC on this Barris, as LPC played it extremely smart and flashing away every single time. But something like this Gragas, you need a very strong AD carry, or at least long-ranged carry to really diss out the damage while you provide that CC in the team fights. Yeah, doesn't feel like this Kragus mid has been able to find any purchase in the LPL so far. And Yagao not having a great game of it himself. It felt like the Ari was a great answer as well, right? Where every attempt from Yagao in the mid lane, Haichao can just zip away from. 7-1-7 and seven on the Ari, by the way. I feel like we didn't talk that much about Haichao across the course of this game, but actually had a phenomenal game on Ari. Doing massive damage, solo killing Bin up in the top side. Like, multiple plays he was a crucial part of following up on the initial engagement. So, fantastic game from him on the Ari. Fantastic game from LGD overall, and it means that we're going to three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break.